Welcome to Inglorious Bastardos, 1941, the French countryside, we got Nazis rolling up on Gustave the French guy. Hans the Jew Hunter goes over to him, goes inside, drinks some milk, is German as fuck, threatens Gustave a bit, then he's like, you are hiding Jews under the floorboard, yeah? And Gustave, scared as fuck, classic French move, raises the white flag and gives a sad wee. The Nazi turd gets in some more Nazi turds, they shoot up the floor, and Hans points at one of the Jews that is getting away, she escapes with a sword ring and runs away and he just lets her go. Why? Aren't you supposed to be the Jew Hunter or some shit? Fucking sloppy. And what about the other three Nazis? Did they just forget? That he pointed out that one of them was running away. Is that why they stayed inside? Fucking retards. Never mind. Cut to uh, Leonardo de Pitt playing Lieutenant Aldo Rain, who's recruiting eight Jewish American soldiers to be dropped into France to do nothing but kill Nazis and scare the living shit out of them. They shall be known as the bastards. Now we switch over to some later time where Hitler goes. <laughs> And he bitches and whines about the bastards because they've been wreaking havoc in France. Also getting his portrait done because he has a major case of the SPS. Then a soldier who survived an encounter with the bastards comes in to have a meeting to tell Hitler about his encounter with the bastards. Which goes as follows. The bastards roll up on a bunch of Nazis and kill them all, scalp them except for three. And they bring over his captain, lieutenant, or superior officer, whatever you get it. Introduce him to the newest member of the bastards, which is Sergeant Hugo Stiglitz. Who's a German dude himself who has a real hard on for killing Nazis, especially the Gestapo folk, right? Those cunts. And after he got captured, the bastards broke him out to recruit him to kill Nazis with them. And one thing I really want to know is how the hell they got away with this prison break mission. Because their approach... <laughs> Didn't really seem like a stealthy one, to be honest. Anyway, dipshit goes, everyone in the German army knows about Hugo Stiglitz. The bastards have a nice lull, and they interrogate him about the position of another German patrol, but he like, fuck you and your Jew dogs. Another lull happens, and Allo goes, I was kinda hoping you'd say that, and calls out Sergeant Donnie Donnie Tits, who specializes in beating Nazis to death with a baseball bat, and proceeds to give the blonde shithead the Calzone Wack and Molly special. They kill the second Nazi and bring the third over, who gives them the info that they want about that other German patrol, and Allo snorts some coke, and gives him a little speech about how he's gonna let him live because he he wants him to spread the, the word and the fear into the German troops and the German army, blah blah blah. And how he doesn't like the fact that after this is all over, he can just take off that uniform and no one will ever know that he was a Nazi. So he goes, I'm gonna give you a little sum you can take off. And carves a swastika on his forehead. You're pretty good at that. Yeah, 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 it's pretty good, no doubt. But, you know, there's definitely room for improvement. Like, over here, you see, you didn't really complete the swastika and you kind of went out of bounds here, too. But, nevertheless, good job. 1944, the whole that Hans let go now somehow comes to own a cinema. And this Nazi fuckboy hits on her, and she ain't interested, so he asks for her papers, and she changed her name to something rather mimue. Why is there an X at the end of it if you're not gonna pronounce it? Fucking French, man. You know what? I'm gonna pronounce it mimix. If that triggers any French speakers out there, good. You can kiss my ass. And fuck English, too. Why is xylophone spelled an X? Fucking stupid horseshit, dumbass language. Off point. Back to the movie. He leaves next day, she be sitting in a cafe, and he walks by like <laughs> <laughs> walks in like <laughs> show us your tits. <laughs> Look, you thirsty Nazi, I am not interested. Then other Nazis start coming in and asking for autographs and shit, cause he a dickhead war hero celebrity or some shit. And she goes, Ooh, in the name of the Eiffel Tower are you? Turns out he was a lone sniper who killed a shit ton of people over the course of many days. Seriously, 68 people on the first day? You fucking disgust me. One off, 69, and you couldn't do it? Fucking rookie. He should've just killed himself to made it 69, actually. That's a win-win for everyone, right? Also, why does this book teleport out of this lady's hand between shots? Unimportant. He jerks himself off a bit more, telling her how they made a movie about his story and he stars in it as himself. And she goes, that is fascinating, but I don't care. Au revoir, bitch. Putain, putain. Puta is bitch in Spanish. Putain is... I don't know, it's this word. Hold on, let me, let me check, let me check. Huh, horror. There you go. That works. It's also spelled putain. Fucking French. So she leaves, goes back to her cinema, then his hard-ass Gestapo Nazi cum bucket comes along, tells her to get her ass in the car, takes her to Joseph Gobbledick, who is Hitler's number two man, and the fuckboy Nazi is there too, in the restaurant actually he's not that much of a fuckboy, he's kind of a simp, so simp Nazi is there too. You see, Gobbledick is the one who ordered for the simp Nazi's movie to be made, and the simp is trying to convince him to screen the movie at Mimix's theater, saying that since it's smaller, it's gonna be more exclusive, and we're gonna have an excuse to only invite Germans and be racist and shit, and Joseph be like, oh, wunderbar, you, yeah, you have convinced me, you pumpernickel scheiße cunt. Then Hans walks in and the bitch recognizes his voice and gets a Vietnam flashback, except it's not Vietnam, uh, that didn't happen yet, it's World War II, so it's World War II flashback, it's more appropriate right there. The Nazi gang leaves, but Hans stays to ask Mimic some questions, some security questions, since he's gonna be hosting the screening of this dumbass movie, and there's gonna be lots of high-ranking German officials there, so security is of top priority. So he asks her some shit and tells her that he knows that she has a black man projectionist, and he tells her she should operate the projector herself, 
himself because they don't want a negro doing it like because if you can fucking tell just by watching the movie what the color of the guy who's projecting it is fucking nazi pricks then he gives her a little scare and he goes hey don't worry i'm a nazi it's cool you can trust me at the bat why am i going italian what he leaves and she has a little freak out when he does then the nazi gang goes to check out her cinema and after they leave marcel be like the hell is this and she tells him about the whole shebang and also tells him that the day of the movie while all the nazis are watching the movie they're gonna use 350 highly flammable film we have to burn this some bitch down and lock the doors behind them so none of them can escape and they all fucking die over to england land we got michael fassbender nigel and winston churchill except he doesn't really matter right now in this movie so fuck off winston over to michael's he speak of the german very good and nigel has intel about the sip movie and all the high german players gonna be there so he gonna get dropped into france incognito meet up with the bastards go over to a rendezvous a location with a german actress who's working as a spy for the brits for the last two years all right he's gonna go there and meet her and they're gonna go together to the movie and blow up the place so they say some shit like a right hey jolly good indeed <laughs> and off he goes to france meets up with the bastards and finds out that brigitte von hammer sharks rendezvous location is a tavern in the basement and aldo's like you know fighting in the basement offers a lot of difficulties number one being you're fighting in the basement yeah i'm with captain yeehaw here on this one why the fuck are you meeting in a tavern she said it was private when is a tavern which is basically an old time bar private even if it's secluded it's accessible to the public which means there's a chance it won't be private so why not meet in a place like i don't know wherever the fuck aldo and his bastards are right now what a fucking dumb hole whatever after the bastards voice their concerns michael stig dicks and this other bastard that speaks perfect german let's call him chad or something put on nazi officer clothing and prepare to go in once they do they find that there are a bunch of nazis in there with bridget von hammer's mac she was hanging out with them so she goes over to him boys and explains that unfortunately ginger pubes over there had a baby today and his commander gave him and his whole squad the day off to go and party and have fun celebrating shit hence the drunk german nazis she also says that they should have at least one drink before they leave so they don't look sus and while they're getting it she is about to spill some new spicy deets about operation kino der toten when ginger pubes comes along asks budget for an autograph and does some drunken shit so michael tries to tell him off then ginger tits ass about his accent then hugo steps in to fix his shit but then player three has joined the game or 12 i don't know how many people on this room but you get it. an unknown variable this skid mark of a nazi gestapo officer joins in he was a dude that got you know mixing shit in the car and he here he joins in asking about his accent they make some convincing lies about his accent and shit then skid mark says let's play a game they just go along with it so they don't rouse any suspicions then after one round they ask to leave and he gives them a suspicious tension stare then he goes i'm just kidding i'm a nazi don't worry about it <laughs> and he orders them one last round of drinks before they leave and michael orders it in an english way which gives off that he's an undercover english dude i don't know how they noticed that but didn't notice that hugo was sitting right next to them because according to the cum stain that got beaten to death by donny everybody in the german army heard of hugo stieglitz i don't know how they don't notice him especially this fucker because he has a real knack for killing gestapo officers so what the fuck whatever the jig is up so they point guns at each other's dicks michael starts speaking the kings because he's about to go out in a blaze of glory balls get shot everyone starts shooting literally everyone fucking dies except for ginger pubes aldo climbs down turns out brig is still alive of course she is, bitch never fucking dies. But she's been shot, so in exchange for his life and not killing Aldo while he comes down to get Bridget, they're not gonna kill him by throwing grenades down and fucking him up. So guy makes deal and Aldo comes down real slow, but Bridget shoots his fucker dead. Now his kid's gonna grow up with no dad, fucking tough titty. They take her to a vet and tend to her bullet wound, then they interrogate her about what the fuck just happened down there. Hey, don't be too loud now. People might hear you, dipshit. Anyway, she goes like, I can see that the Nazis being there must look odd. And he goes, Yeah, we got word for that kind of odd in English. It's called suspicious. Fucking bad pit, bro. Anyway, he sticks his finger in her hole, her bullet hole, not any of the other ones. And she explains everything in a hurry, finger out of hole, they believe her. Then tells him that she had tickets for the movie in Nimix's theater or cinema, sorry. And they'd wear tuxedos, pretend to be German film dunes or whatever, and go in there and blow this shit up. But now they can do that because of fucking dead. And they're like, fuck, oh my god, now we can't do that no more. But then she gives out the new development, Hitler is gonna be there so they quickly come up with a new plan because this shit is too big to pass up on ella is gonna be her italian date and mario and luigi here will be italian filmmakers boom no germany to baby and she will wrap her leg up in a cast and pretend she was in a mountain climbing accident and operation kino's back on easy game easy life meanwhile hans finds a diver massacre does some detective work snoops around finds brig's shoe and the autograph that she gave mimics looking fine doing some contemplation on the night of the screening then a montage of makeup movie making more makeup then this face net thing what the fuck is this fashion man i never got it like what the fuck is this thing? And something like this, for example. Who wears this crap? Also, this has been a long time coming, actually. Ripped jeans. Why y'all paying money? You look like you've been dragged across the street by a bulldozer, huh? Also, people who wear glasses.
sunglasses without lenses as a fashion accessory. What's next? You're gonna put on a cast just for fun? You're gonna walk around with a fucking IV bag? Cause you hear it's really in right now? Fucking dumbasses. I hope all your socks are eternally wet. Rant over. Where was I? Right, the movie thing is about to happen. Hans sees Brig, asks her about her foot. And when he hears her excuse, he has a literal le mail. Then speaks some Italian to the bastards. Just how many languages can this guy speak? Damn. Sends off Mario and Luigi to their seats. They walk by all of German officials like, holy shit. Hans takes Brig in to Mimix's office and tells her to put your foot on my lap now and puts her lost shoe on her foot and boom cinderella moment except not really because he already knew that it was her then he chokes her to death kinky stuff he also apprehends lieutenant aldo takes some sporty boys off his feet has a nice little i can finally touch you voldemort moment with aldo to which he responds in the most american way possible and apprehends one of the other bastards on lookout you know what happened to donnie Omar? Yeah, another question would be, where are the rest of the bastards? Like these guys. Are they on lookout too, but didn't get caught? Are they dead? Are they out scalping Nazis? I'm curious. Don't matter though, cause Hans takes them somewhere and tells them that he will not arrest Mario and Luigi and let them blow up the place and end the war if he can make a deal with a superior officer on the radio thingy to secure his safety and comfort and a private island and all that type of crap after the war's over. Meanwhile, movie's playing, Mario goes snooping around, wait, his name's Donnie, right? Well, whatever. Mario, Donnie, who cares? He finds Hitler, calls over Luigi, and how does this giant room full of the highest ranking German officials not suspect anything is up with these two? dudes leaving like this. Whatever, Mimix and Marcel do smooch, oh yeah, they're lovers, forgot to mention that. He goes off to lock the doors of the cinema and prepares to burn the place down, and the only place that isn't locked is the Bethlehem Hitler's in, and Sint Nazi's there too, cause you know, he's a decorated war hero, blah blah blah, and he's low-key ashamed of his movie and kinda bored, so he goes up to Mimix, knocks on the door, she opens up, and he's like, I want some sexies, no, fuck off. So he bursts open the door, and goes in like, I gave you everything, I even donated two whole dollars to your Twitch stream, and you won't even let me fuck you in the ass. Okay, close the door, say, what? So as he goes over to do that, she shoots him in the back and nobody notices cause gunshots in movie and they can't hear it. Then he starts moving around a bit and dumb hoe feels bad and goes over closer to him. You should make sure he's dead before he kills you first, not feel bad for him. Yep, there she goes. He shoots her and they both bleed out and die. Bro, this bitch is a literal simp Nazi that burst in here to basically rape you. Why do you feel any sympathy for this guy at all? Whatever. Meanwhile, good old elf enjoying the movie while Mario and Luigi concoct a plan to kill him using some wrist mounted guns that they just happen to have on them. Then suddenly mimics aka Shannon, whatever her real name is, shows up on the screen, basically says, go jump off a cliff, you fucking stupid ass motherfucking fat joke nazis gimp sucking motherfucking cunt suckers eat my ass lick my taint and choke on my fat chode bitches marcel burns the place down at the same time mario and luigi pop out and turn gobble dick and titler into swiss cheese unload on everyone else bombs go off and the kino fucking explodes then somewhere in the woods hans generic nazi number 75 aldo and you the bitch make it to the american front lines and hans goes we're officially your prisoners all oh, giggly and shit because he made that deal with aldo's commander so aldo can't kill him so they kill this bitch because nobody gives a fuck about him you the bitch goes to scalp him and aldo tells hans that ending the war tonight for all the shit he asked for is a pretty good deal but he still don't like the fact that he can take that uniform off and no one will never know that he was a Nazi. So before he sends him off to his commander, once again, he's gonna give him a little something he can't take off. <laughs> you know something, you bitch? I think this just might be my masterpiece. Yeah, I'd say so too. You really did improve on the areas you were lacking on before, Aldo. Nice job, bitch. This movie gets seven Zlatan Ibrahimo bitches out of seven Yuda bitches.